With only a few months between its announcement and release date, Mortal Kombat 1 feels like a masterclass in how to reveal and release a new game. Literally insane. And this past weekend only reinforced that fact with the release of the first network stress test. Insane. Giving gamers around the world a chance to try out the latest in combat. I was lucky enough to be able to play this network test myself, and I'm here to talk about it today. After all, what makes this release especially interesting is NetherRealm's decision to move away from their own Unreal Engine 3 derived technology, used in prior games, to Unreal Engine 4. Yes, that's right, it seems to be Unreal Engine 4, not 5. For this test, I had access to the game on Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, but no other platforms, so at least we can compare these two versions. When you first boot the game, you're greeted by this gorgeous 4K backdrop with crisp menu elements overlaid. This stress test includes two modes, an offline four-fight ladder mode and an online battle. There are four characters to choose from in this build, Sub-Zero, Liu Kang, Kenshi, and Kitana. You'll also have access to three cameo characters, Kano, Sonya Blade, and the cigar-chomping Jax. More on them later. Even before the fight begins though, you know you're in for something special, thanks to one of the finest transitions from selection screen to fight that I've ever seen. It starts the second you find a match. The two default fighters emerge from the tree line, and the selection window appears seamlessly. You then choose your fighter, followed by your cameo, and then marvel as the two competitors assume Mortal Kombat 3-like poses seamlessly. With the camera zoomed in, the background is now completely out of focus, but if you watch closely, you'll note that it changes based on the stage you're currently highlighting. Once you hit that button, the two exchange some words, the game loads, and then the camera seamlessly pulls back out to reveal the fighters in the selected stage. Again, no cuts here, it's just a straight line from menu to battle, and it looks amazing. I know, this may seem like a minor thing, but nailing that transition between menu and battle is so crucial when it comes to building energy for the battle to come. This is also one benefit to building the game for SSD equipped consoles. I think it makes a huge difference. Now once you're in the game, we're given our first look at the visuals. I was initially underwhelmed by the reveal trailer for this game, but after seeing it in person, I've come to the conclusion that the low bitrate of the YouTube trailer really did this game an injustice, if you will. On Xbox Series X, I was really impressed with the first look at this game, as it seems to deliver a full native 4K with dynamic resolution scaling, meaning it can drop just slightly below depending on the action, but it is undoubtedly very crisp. It's also brighter and more colorful than Mortal Kombat 11, something I was initially skeptical about, but I think it looks really good in this case. Without a doubt, the stars of the show are the characters. Can I just pause here on Katana for a second? Look closely at her clothing here, the texture. It almost feels tangible somehow, like this realistic blue cloth with uneven stitching, adjoined by a completely different type of blue cloth offset by these golden flourishes. All the characters exhibit this same high level of detail too. Now it's not necessarily a gigantic leap from MK11, but honestly, these look really great. Also note the cloth and blood simulation. The virtual cloth features realistic flexibility and gravity properties swirling around as the fighters engage one another, while the blood system presents these long, fluid trails of digital droplets with each attack. It looks great. And if I pause the action here, Note how the blood is lit differently depending on whether it's in shadow or directly affected by the light. Animation wise, however, this is still very much Mortal Kombat. Personally, I feel this style of animation is central to the core gameplay and pacing of a Mortal Kombat fight, so I like it, but it also means that it looks pretty much like other recent entries in the series. Thankfully, they did retain the per pixel character motion blur as seen in MK11. It's subtle, so it doesn't blur the action, but I think it looks great in motion. Still, if you're not a fan of Mortal Kombat style animation, you might be disappointed by this aspect. Another thing that was difficult to gauge from the original footage though is the level of detail seen in the backgrounds. There's a ton of subtle touches and fine detail placed back there and you might not even notice it during a battle, so let's pause the action and check it out. Look at this couch and table combo in Johnny Cage's mansion. It's so unassuming, yet so well-crafted. 
From the glorious marble slab used for the tabletop to the subtle shadowing between the couch cushions and the fuzzy material used on the couch, all the way to the shaggy carpet beneath it. All of this feels like a huge step up from MK11 in terms of material quality. You can even see the reflections of the two fighters in the wine bucket on the table here. And yes, physics still apply, so all of this can be kind of knocked over and jostled during battle. Furthermore, in the stress test demo, each arena has a day and night variant with subtle changes between them. The point is, is that there's a ton of small detail throughout the game thus far, and I think it really elevates the overall presentation, and I point it out because it really wasn't that obvious from the original reveal video. But everything I've shown you thus far has been running on Xbox Series X, so you might be wondering, how does it look on Series S? Well, honestly, I think it looks pretty great, but image quality takes a predicted hit. During the cinematic sequences, for instance, you'll get around 1440p, which is pretty good. But once the battle begins, it seems to drop to around 1080p or so, so you're losing a lot of fine detail in the process. However, the key here is that aside from resolution, the visuals are otherwise intact and largely a match for Series X. The pixel count here really isn't a big issue, it's just that when you combine it with Unreal's TAA solution, it does look a little smeary on the Xbox Series S versus X. But of course, the most important aspect with any fighting game is the performance, and this is something I'm always cautious with when looking at a pre-release build, but in this case, the news is mostly very good. Let's start by checking out some battles here on Xbox Series X. First impressions suggest a stable 60 frames per second during battle, which again is an absolute must for any fighting game. That is so important here, and they deliver. It's what we expect, and even in this pre-release form, it's basically flawless. There is one caveat, however, in that the pre-match cinematics, the fatal blow animations, the fatalities, and everything else that's not gameplay is rendered out at 30 frames per second, just like prior games. I know these scenes are more demanding, but it is a shame that we still don't get to experience them at full frame rate on a console. I say that because as far as I understand, the PC version of MK11 allows you to uncap the frame rate during these scenes. Even at 30 though, thanks to the excellent per pixel motion blur, I still think the scenes look pretty great. They're just a little too uh, spicy for YouTube. Now, Xbox Series S then produces pretty much exactly the same results. 60 FPS during battle, 30 FPS during the cinematic sequences. Honestly, it's not too surprising as NetherRealm Studios has always prioritized frame rate over everything else, something that was extremely evident in the Vita version of MK9, which was 60 FPS at the expense of fidelity. But with MK1, at least the Series S only really loses out in terms of image quality. So yeah, in its current state, I'd say that both Xbox versions of the game look and run very well, and I suspect the same will be true of the PlayStation version as well. It's also shaping up to be one of the best looking fighting games in the market. The big question remaining for me then is the Switch version. Mortal Kombat 11 plays well on the Switch, but it saw a gigantic loss in visual quality. But that was using their custom Unreal Engine 3 derived technology base, right? UE4 is very well supported on the Switch in comparison, which makes me wonder if it might actually look slightly better. I'll also be interested to see how they tackle the loading times, which are typically much longer in Switch games. But either way, we'll find out soon enough when the final game hits. My only real concern remaining relates to the game's cutscenes. The story mode is a huge part of the MK experience, but I found that most games that ship on Unreal Engine these days tend to have rather poor video playback with improper frame pacing. This was not a problem with Mortal Kombat 11, but with the engine change, there's always a chance that the video playback could get messed up like many other Unreal Engine games. So if you're watching this NetherRealm, please pay close attention to video playback. But that's basically the stress test in a nutshell. It looks, runs, and plays like a dream, even in this pre-release form, and I'm certainly eager to get my hands on the final game. But that's going to do it for this video, so we'll see you next time.